Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another day of Vlogmas. So today I thought it'd be fun to share with you three different ways that I enjoy using watercolors to create my own handmade gift wrap. All right, so I am one of those people again who really loves to personalize my gifts by either making handmade cards, handmade tags, or even gift wrap. I am that person in the family who likes to use my creativity to add some personal touches. And what I tend to keep on hand over here regardless of the time of year, is either a roll of craft paper, butcher paper, or any kind of larger paper surface that can be transformed into personalized wrap. Often during the holidays, I will buy rolls of plain white, red, or some sort of solid color that I can keep in my studio to paint, draw, work over the top of. This is kind of a fun time of year to get things on sale. So if you are looking for a roll of paper, just a solid paper, whether it is a matte surface, slick surface, just know that you can always alter those surfaces with different tools and materials. But today I wanted to actually focus on watercolors. Last year I shared some ways that I create um, my own handmade gift wrap with acrylic paint and I thought it'd be fun to share how I use watercolors on just simple white craft paper in three different ways. And the first is what I call a messy surface. This is what I shared last year with acrylic paint but again I want to share how you can take a different supply or material and apply it to a concept to get a different result. So a messy surface for me is really getting expressive, working with maybe messy areas of color, scribbles, mark making. I like to treat a surface like this a little bit like I treat a larger painting of any type of medium where I get really expressive, lots of movement with my hands. But what you're going to notice in this approach is that I'm repeating similar things around that surface. Even though it's quite childlike, quite messy and imperfect, I am replicating those imperfections throughout the surface and in similar ways. They're not perfect, they are not evenly or perfectly spaced, but you'll notice I have scribbles sprinkled around, I have some mark making with those dots or brush strokes sprinkled around, I have little areas of green blobs sprinkled around, and then I am dripping and letting things just kind of drip and go where they may on that surface. This is a really quick, easy concept to actually create the look the illusion of pattern or surface design without over planning, measuring things out, or over designing things. I just like to sprinkle similar concepts, even if it is messy, childlike, expressive, abstract, you name it, I sprinkle them around that surface in similar ways. And the larger you go, the easier this is to do because you have a lot of space to stretch out, use movement, to get expressive with that surface. Now, something to keep in mind about using any kind of wet media on something like butcher paper or craft paper is you may have a little bit of ripple or buckle initially when that surface is wet. I find that typically when things dry, it will flatten out, but I am notorious over here. If you take my classes, I talk about this all the time. If you are using thinner, cheaper paper when it comes to working with wet media, all you need to do is hit it with an iron on the lowest setting really, really quick on the back of your surface and you will be able to flatten things out if for some reason things ripple or buckle a little bit as they dry. I tend to not be too concerned about it because I end up cutting this up, wrapping it, it, using it maybe as a filler inside of a gift bag. So for me, it's going to get a little bit distorted and crumpled as I move into my wrapping process, but you can absolutely use a craft iron or an iron on a very low setting to smooth out any kind of paper surface that might have a little bit of distortion from using anything wet. Now I can't resist going back into the surface once it dries and I am just using Sharpies and a paint pen to add a few more little marks again sprinkled throughout that surface. It is that repetition of elements, once again, that creates the illusion of there maybe being pattern or some sort of repeat design, regardless of what you are using on that surface. And so again, even as I'm adding marks, I'm adding them in similar areas, in similar ways. I'm not overthinking or getting perfect. I'm letting it still be really messy and expressive. But again, picking areas to repeat those dots, those designs is going to create something that feels a little bit more like a pattern 
patterned surface. So this is for all the messy people out there, but I want to get a little bit more refined with some designs. One thing to use is actually a cookie cutter dipped in paint to create some sort of outline or shape. I love using stamps. I love dipping things in paint and a cookie cutter, especially during the holidays, is really easy to access. These were $1 at Target. There's some great fun shapes out there. You can use them throughout the year in your art. And I'm actually going to be using those watercolors once again with my star cookie cutter shape. I will be putting my materials in the description box, but I'm actually using a set of watercolors as well as my palette filled with tube watercolors. I will use just about anything when it comes to watercolors. I find if I'm working on a larger surface, those tube watercolors or even gouache is easier for me to load up a larger paintbrush and cover a larger surface, but just about any watercolors are going to work for this process. Now what I'm wanting to do is actually just create the outline line of the star and cover my entire surface. If you're ever stamping or making an impression with watercolors, you're never going to get a crisp, clean, clear impression like you would with maybe acrylic paint or an ink pad, and that is okay. I'm actually going for that. All I'm wanting is that outline of the star because I'm going to fill all the space around those stars with a lot of color. Those cookie cutters can be used in a variety of different ways, as stamps, as the beginning of a design that you might paint inside of and they can also be used with unexpected supplies and materials like those watercolors. So once again I am working on that craft paper, a large piece of it that I am going to fill the entire surface with those stars. Then I'm going to jump back in with color. And in my opinion, one of the best parts of watercolors is the ability to quickly create beautiful washes of color that are quite unpredictable. And that is what I wanted to do around those star shapes. I want to keep those star shapes bright and white, but use a lot of different shades of green in and around every single shape. So this one actually took me a lot longer than my previous example with that messy surface because I'm having to work around the edges of those stars. But it's just another fun example of how you can create a patterned surface, a surface with a lot of repetition and very interesting color and surface design. I'm really not too concerned about anything being perfect, obviously. That is kind of the way that I work over here and the way that I enjoy working. So any drips that occur, any kind of weird things happening with that color, I just end up embracing it. Often when I'm creating a large surface filled with color, design, or pattern, I don't get too concerned with perfection, especially because I know I'm going to either be cutting it up, using it to wrap a gift, or even turning it into collage papers, things that I might repurpose in my own work later on down the road. That's when I give myself freedom to let things be very imperfect, messy. If there are mistakes, I just go ahead and embrace them because these surfaces will more than likely be cut up and re repurposed, transformed in different ways. So my goal was to get all of the space around those stars completely filled with some sort of shade of green. My goal originally was to create different shades of green and let them kind of blend and blur into each other. Because I'm using craft paper, it does not behave the same way as watercolor paper. It often gets soaked up a little bit quicker than watercolor paper does. Watercolor paper allows you to kind of move that color and that water around and it dries a lot slower lower. If you're working on a cheaper, thinner paper, not made for wet media, it's going to get soaked up a little bit and behave a little bit differently than some of those more traditional supplies. But I will say, I've been using butcher paper, craft paper for so many years with a variety of different supplies, and it works really well with a lot of wet media. Watercolor paint, ink, gouache, acrylic paint, even watered down acrylic paint ends up working quite well on any kind of craft paper or butcher paper. Now, I couldn't resist finishing this off with a whole bunch of splatter. I love splatter, and I love splattering with those watercolors, and so I thought it would be fun to just go over the top of this entire surface with a light little splatter of green paint, whatever was left on my palette, that I could utilize to just fill a little bit of that white space. Again, this is just another really easy, accessible example to use something for a shape or a design or an impression or a stamp, like a cookie cutter, and create that repeat design on a large surface. This is a fun one to play 
play around with if maybe you are not comfortable drawing or painting. It's also a fun one to do with kids because anybody can dip a cookie cutter in paint and really play around with those impressions and designs. My third and final surface for inspiration creating watercolor gift wrap is actually getting really refined with your approach. This one is for those of you who enjoy brush work, who enjoy the movement of your hand and the way that that brush interacts on that surface depending on the pressure you are putting on things. And this is actually one of my favorites. I can work really quickly on watercolor vines and leaves. And this is one of my personal favorite ways to create really pretty gift wrap that has that handmade look and feel to it. And what I'm doing is using my brush to create both the stem and the leaves of my vines. And I'm just going to twist and curve them around each other as I build a surface filled with this vine and leaves approach or design across my surface. I personally like using a round brush when I am creating watercolor flowers or leaves and vines. You could use a flat brush. The larger the brush, the easier it is to fill a large surface. But if you want tinier designs, you just are going to want to pick a smaller brush. And what you'll notice me doing is really repeating the same approach on all of my vines and leaves. I'm starting with a very curved line and I am curving my lines around each of the designs that are already there. You'll watch this develop as I begin to fill that space. And after I've got my beginning curved line, I then add my leaves around that line. That's what creates that beautiful little branch or that vine with leaves. And I'm just going to work my way in and around and across the surface, repeating the same approach. My goal when I'm working this way is to fill that space, which means I have to kind of make decisions about where I will squeeze things in. But I like to use the vines that I have already created as a little guide for me. My goal is just to bend, twist, and curve my designs around anything next to it. And that is a fun way to start building this really beautiful surface. And for my own approach, I decided to continue to work with different shades of green. I add some darker greens here and there. I like to also rinse my brush, water down some of that pigment so I've got some lighter brush strokes. I find variation in color often creates things that look more complex on that surface than they actually are. And that's what's so fun about working with watercolors. You can really load up your brush with color, but then once you rinse it a little bit in your water, you can lighten things up and have a lighter shade and have this really interesting push and pull between darker shades of color, lighter shades of color. And once you begin building a surface with that variation, it instantly becomes a little bit more interesting with that color. Because I'm repeating the same shape over and over again, or the same general shape and design, it is that color that really begins to set things apart and continue to add that visual interest. And you'll notice as I continue to fill this surface, I have some vines and leaves that are a lighter shade of green, others that are dark, and for me personally, this is what just gives that handmade look, that handmade touch that you often can't get in store-bought wrapping paper. And when I'm working this large and with a more refined approach where I'm using a lot of that brushwork, some more details, I find it helpful to rotate my surface so I can fill that space in an interesting way. Again, that's another fun aspect of working large is you can stretch out, you can go larger with those designs, you can move that surface around and really fill that space in an interesting and creative way. As the designs in this video are pretty comfortable for me, they took me in live time anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to create. So not a lot of time, but also more time than going out and purchasing wrapping paper. But I love using this as a way to personalize some gifts here and there. And depending on the time I have each holiday season or whenever I am gift giving, I will use store-bought gift wrap, but I love using it in combination with my own handmade surfaces. It's a really fun way to use your creativity to personalize personalize a gift. I'm hoping this inspires you all to not only play around with getting creative with your gift wrap, but also using this as inspiration any time of year to create large pieces of hand-painted papers that you can use in your own creative projects throughout the year.